So this is certainly, definitely, 100% unique, strange, and I'll be honest, weird. But what a joy. What a joy that is that, that first of all, for me, I don't have to preach straight to a camera, keeping a stiff neck the entire time. I can actually look around and see faces of our brothers and sisters in Christ. What a joy that is. But it's also awesome that you and I continue to connect through God's Word. So today is a very special Pentecost worship service, one that I doubt any of us will ever forget. Before we, we begin our worship, just a few notes of uh, just things for you to take note of before we begin. Um, as you have been doing, we are encouraging everybody for at least this one to stay in their vehicles for this one. Uh, certainly feel free to roll down your, your windows if you want. You can hear through the speakers. Otherwise, you could hear through your radio. So it is FM 103.5 is what you can tune into, and you should be able to hear me through that as well. Um, and also, just another note, uh, during this service, we will not be collecting any sort of offering. Continue to, to send that in the same way you have been using, whether through PayPal 
or, um, or through mailing it or, or whatever you have been doing. I encourage you to keep using that. Otherwise, I, I think that's all the announcements I have. Lord's blessings on our worship as we focus on how we have been thoroughly equipped to serve and to share. And we're going to begin our Pentecost worship by singing our opening hymn, Come Holy Ghost, Creator Blessed, Hymn 177. Feel free to either follow along or sing along in your cars. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Teach us to know the Father, Son, and you from both as three in one, that we your name may ever bless, and in our lives the truth confess. Now comes the portion of our worship where we confess our sins, acknowledging our sinfulness before our Father and asking for His forgiveness. Note that throughout the service, I'll be speaking both my part and speaking along with you for the congregational parts. Dear brothers and sisters in Jesus, we come together this morning for this special drive-in worship service. As we do every time, we gather together to approach our God's throne of grace. Knowing that we have fallen short of His mark of perfection, let us confess our sins together. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful, and that I have disobeyed You in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil, and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Peter proclaimed this about our Savior. All the prophets testify about Him that through His name, everyone who believes in Him receives forgiveness of sins. Dear brothers and sisters, fellow believers in Christ, the forgiveness our Lord has won is ours. Hear the word of Christ through His called servant. I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Now in the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord by singing, Oh, that I had a thousand voices, hymn 242. To praise my God with thousand tongues, my heart, which in the Lord rejoices, would then proclaim in grateful songs to all wherever I might be what great things God has done for me. Thanksgiving until my heart is still in death, and when at last my lips grow cold, your praise shall in my sights be told. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, God and Lord. Come to us this joyful day with your sevenfold gift of grace. Rekindle in our hearts the holy fire of your love, that in a true and living faith we may tell abroad the glory of our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Father, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now for... God's words portion of our worship service will be starting by looking at our first lesson, the Old Testament lesson, Joel chapter 2. Joel, a prophet of the Old Testament, well before the Pentecost day had come, knew because God had informed him about this Pentecost, that no longer would God just pick select people to pour out his spirit to serve him in sharing the word, but instead he would pour it out on all people that they might serve and share the good news of Jesus Christ and sins forgiven. A reading from Joel chapter 2, verses 28 through 29. After this, I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on the servants, both male and female, I will pour out my Spirit in those days. This is the word of the Lord. And we'll join in singing our response, God has spoken by his prophets, verse 1. God has spoken by his prophets, spoken his unchanging word. Each from age to age proclaiming God the one, the righteous Lord. In the world's despair and turmoil, one firm maker holds us fast. God is King, His throne eternal, God the first and God the last. Our second lesson for this Pentecost Sunday comes from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. This will be the text for our sermon today. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the rushing of a violent wind came from heaven, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw divided tongues that were like fire resting on each one of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, since the Spirit was giving them the ability to speak fluently. Now, there were godly Jewish men from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. When this sound was heard, a crowd came together and was confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were completely baffled and said to each other, Look, are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them speaking in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites. 
residents of Mesopotamia and of Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya around Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring in our own languages the wonderful works of God. They were all amazed and perplexed. They kept saying to one another, What does this mean? But others mocked them and said, They are full of new wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and spoke loudly and clearly to them. Men of Judea and all you residents of Jerusalem, understand this and listen closely to my words. These men are not drunk as you suppose. For it is only the third hour of the day. On the contrary, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. This is what God says will happen in the last days. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see dreams. Your old men will dream dreams. I even on my servants, both men and women. I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and a rising cloud of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And this will happen. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. We now sing verse 3 of God has spoken by His prophets. Speaking by His Spirit, speaking to the hearts of all, in the ageless word expounding His own message for us all. Through the rise and fall of nations, one sure faith is standing fast. God abides His word unchanging, God the first and God the last. Our verse of the day from John chapter 14. Alleluia. If you love me, hold on to my commands. I will ask the Father and He will give you another counselor to be with you forever. He is the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it does not see Him or know Him. You know Him because He stays with you and will be in you. Alleluia. We'll now sing verse 2 of God has spoken by His prophets. God has spoken by Christ Jesus, Christ the everlasting Son, brightness of the Father's glory, with the Father ever one, spoken by the Word incarnate, God from God before time was, light from light to earth descending, He reveals our God to us. Our Gospel lesson for this Pentecost Sunday comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 16. Here again we hear the promise clearly that God is going to send the Holy Spirit for all people so that they will be guided in sharing and spreading the Word. John 16, verses 5-11. through 11. But now I am going away to Him who sent me, and not of you, and not one of you asked me, where are you going? Yet, because I have told you these things, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I am telling you the truth. It is good for you that I go away. For if I do not go away, the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will convict the world about sin, about righteousness, and about judgment about sin, because they do not believe in me, about righteousness, because I am going to the Father and you will no longer see me, about judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. This is the gospel of our Lord. We'll now join together in singing our hymn of the day, a hymn that really proclaims our mission as Christians. There is a bomb in Gilead. We'll sing all verses and the refrain. Yeah. 
soul. Sometimes I feel discouraged and think my work's in vain. But then the Holy Spirit revives my soul again. There is a bomb in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a bomb in Gilead to heal the sin sick soul. If you cannot preach like Peter, if you cannot pray like Paul, you can tell the love of Jesus and say he died for all. There is a bomb in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a bomb My dear friends in Jesus, our sermon lesson today comes from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. Behok, Mizrak, Mema'ara, Hirkik, Memenu et Pesha'inu, Proethentes un mate toiseta patate ethne, Kai edu ego mathemon aimi, pas tas emeras. Eos te sintelias tu Ionas. Life is full of unexpected things. Life is full of, of twists and turns. Life is full of surprises. Life is just flat out unexpected. We might have our, our plans set, our, our schedules, the, the layouts of what we think is best. But finally... The unexpected will come. I guess you could say that we are to expect the unexpected. And has the last few months ever shown us that? But for me, I want to go further than just a, a few months. I want to go back personally for me an entire year. Because it was about one year from now, earlier, when I graduated from Wisconsin Lutheran Seminary and was assigned to Peace Lutheran Church in Loves Park, Illinois. And as soon as I heard that awesome news, I began making this mental list of things that I expected to happen in my first year as a pastor. So let me share a couple of those with you. So in my first year as a pastor, I expected that it would take some time getting addressed, getting used to being addressed as pastor. I expected that I'd be preaching and teaching a lot about Jesus. I expected that I'd be making plenty of mistakes as a first-year pastor and, Lord willing, learning from those mistakes. I expected that I would be taking some good amount of time to get to know everybody's name, but on top of that, spend a good amount of time getting to know and learning more about some awesome people who love their Lord. I expected to be part of people's lives. Really get to know them. So let's see. How did I do so far? Check, 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 and, and check. But life is unexpected. Mm -hmm. Yep. As I look around, I, I can't say that I honestly anticipated this, not in the slightest. Who in the world would have expected that I would be leading worship in a parking lot standing on a hay wagon? There's no way. There's no way that I expected that my first Easter worship service would be preached to an empty church with just a man and a camera. <laughs> There's no way. There's no way that I expected that we would have two months straight, if not more, of no in-person worship. Not a chance. Life is unexpected. 
So how about you? Have you noticed some unexpected twists and turns in your life here in the last few months? I'm sure you have. But my guess is that you also have experienced some unexpected things outside of these three months. Because after all, life is unexpected, pandemic or no pandemic. And so, I want to focus on that. I want to focus on the fact that life is very much unexpected and tie that into our Pentecost worship service. I want us, as we zero in on the real reason for Pentecost, to see that there actually are times when we can expect the unexpected. And what better place to go than Acts chapter 2? After all, Acts chapter 2 is one of those just quintessential, one of those perfect examples of what it means to have something unexpected happen. Think about it. Think about that first Pentecost. Try to put yourself there, especially in the shoes of one of the disciples. Earlier, you had spent some time, who knows how long, just kind of staring up in the sky on the mountain as you watched Jesus ascend into heaven. And while you're staring up, thoughts and questions and doubts and worries are just flooding into your mind. Uh, he's gone. He, he, he's really gone. Jesus, my, my Savior, my Lord, my friend, He's, he's gone. He left. And, and not only that, he, he gave me the task of preaching, proclaiming, sharing, spreading the news. What if I can't do that? What if I fall short? What if I lack what I need? What will that look like? Jesus, you, you promised that you'd be with us, that you would not leave us as orphans, and I know that you promised to send us the Holy Spirit to guide us, but how? When? What will that look like? How? How? How familiar that question is, isn't it? Even though there are plenty, and I mean plenty of years, between the disciples and us here today at Peace Lutheran Church, even though they are two completely different cultures, even though two, there are two different completely set of circumstances, that question remains the same. How? How? The disciples, in their sinful weakness, asked, How in the world, Lord, do you expect me to share the good news. How? You see, they, they didn't trust that their Lord would provide. How familiar. How very, very, very familiar. How often we ask the very same question. God, I'm not equipped. I don't have the right kind of training. I don't have the right kind of personality. I, I don't have the right gifts. I, I don't have the right skills or abilities. I can't do it. How do you expect me to take on such an important task? Really, when we think about it, the only how question that you and I should be asking our God is, how in the world do you continue to show me faithful constant love when my love for you and the task that you gave to me is anything but faithful and constant. How? When our sinful nature tries to do the talking as, as when it comes to us sharing the good news, it's at that point we need to be reminded of the unexpected of Pentecost. So back to Acts chapter 2 we go. So not a breeze, not, not a, a gust of wind, not even a strong gust of wind. No, no, no. This was the sound of a strong, violent, rushing wind that came and filled the entire room. Do you think that got anybody's attention? Do you think that made anybody stop dead in their tracks? I certainly think so. Unexpected? Probably. Probably. But that's not the height of the unexpected events on this first Pentecost. So let's move on. What happens next? Oh yeah, the, the tongues of fire. Tongues of fire. Literally, fire, flames, and the shape of tongues on top of people's heads. Not burning them, not singeing them, but sitting, resting right there. <laughs> unexpected? Absolutely. But even that, 
That's not the height of the unexpected of this first Pentecost. Okay, so let's move on to the next thing. Oh yeah, the languages. All of a sudden, these men with these fire tongues on top of their head, they were able to speak in languages not of their own. These languages they probably had not known a lick of before, but yet all of a sudden, they could speak. They could speak in these languages fluently. <laughs> Unexpected? Absolutely. But even that, even that's not the height, the most important, unexpected part of this first Pentecost. All right, Pastor, what gives? What is it then? If it's not the wind, if it's not the fire, if it's not the languages, what is the most unexpected part of this first Pentecost? It's the promise, and it's the message. It's this unexpected promise that God would send the Holy Spirit to equip people. It's the unexpected message that these people were equipped to share. But as you and I know, this, this promise to send the Holy Spirit <laughs> wasn't really unexpected. No, it wasn't exactly a secret. As Jesus had told His disciples that this was coming again and again and again and again, on and on and on, especially at the end of His ministry. This was not unexpected. This was not a surprise. But the unexpected thing is who the recipients of that promise were. Sinners. <laughs> who would have expected that God would have used broken, weak, sinful people to carry out the most important job of sharing God's Word? Who would have anticipated that God would then send this precious gift of the Holy Spirit to help these people do this work. That is just incredible. It doesn't make sense. Why would God use unfaithful followers then and unfaithful followers now to carry out this precious work? And yet He did. Just as He promised on that first Pentecost, God poured out His Holy Spirit onto His people, giving them the ability to speak in all these different languages. And why? So that the good news would be shared. So that God's good news would be shared. You know, God does the very same thing still for you and for me. Although, not the languages part. No, he, he still equips us with His Holy Spirit to share the Word. The Holy Spirit, every time that we share, is with us. We are thoroughly equipped. And oftentimes that means that He works in spite of us, right? The Holy Spirit is there working through the Word and, and us, even in the times when we are weak and frail, which, if you're anything like me, is most of the time. The Holy Spirit is there working despite of the times where we do not know what to say and the words just come fumbling out of our mouth. The Holy Spirit is there working even in the time when our attitude toward sharing is not the best. Something that we can always, always count on. The Holy Spirit will be there every time that we share, fully equipping us to carry out His will. That is that everyone hears this message. So, that brings us to the other unexpected part of Pentecost. The message. Now, you and I know the message, and we know it very, very well. We've heard it since we could speak it, and even before then, we heard it when we didn't really understand it, and yet, that was planted in our hearts. The truth that Peter proclaimed so boldly and beautifully in his Pentecost sermon that he quoted from the prophet Joel. And this will happen. That everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Now again, not exactly the most unexpected message, but this is unexpected in the same way that the promise is unexpected. The recipients. You and me. This is who the message is for. Think about it this way. If you had two options, which of these two would you choose? If you... We're given the option to take someone near and dear to you and let them die. No, 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 no. More than that. 
but let them be brutally murdered, shamed, scorned, beaten, mocked, in the most humiliating, painful way possible. If you could have that happen to a dear loved one, just so that people who committed a crime upon crime upon crime could avoid the punishment for those crimes, would you do that? <laughs> no. There's no way. And yet, when you and I ask that very same question of God, He says yes. He, he let His Son be brutally murdered on a cross so that you and I and everybody in the world of the crimes that we committed may be freed of the punishment of death. Wow. How amazing. How unexpected. So that's the unexpected promise. That's the unexpected message that comes on this Pentecost. Now speaking of unexpected, perhaps some of you are starting, as you see me wrap up this sermon, you're starting to think back to the very beginning when I was speaking all sorts of gibberish. And you're wondering, what in the world was that all about? I, I took time to, to memorize and recite uh, one passage in Greek and one passage in Hebrew. Not, not because I want to demonstrate how Pentecost is all about speaking in tongues, because it's not. Pentecost is not about speaking in tongues. That's a very, very small sliver of the first Pentecost. No, I did that because within those passages, those very familiar passages from Scripture, the true message of Pentecost is revealed. First, the unexpected message, which I recited in Hebrew, Psalm 103, verse 12. As far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed all of your transgressions. And then the promise, the promise to equip you to share this message, Matthew 28, parts of 19 and 20. Go and make disciples of all nations, and surely I will be with you always to the very end of the age. Brothers and sisters, that unexpected promise, that unexpected message it's yours. It's yours to have, and it's yours to share. You know the message. You have been equipped. Lord's blessings as you go and tell the world. Amen. Now the peace of God which goes beyond all understanding. Guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now in response to our sermon, we'll sing hymn 471, Renew Me, O Eternal Light, where it's printed in the bulletin. Renew me, O oh, eternal light, and let my heart and soul be bright, illumined with the light of grace that issues from your holy face. Created me a new continue together confessing our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed printed for you on page 9. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, I'll continue with the prayer of the church. It's a responsive prayer. Again, I will be speaking both my parts and also your parts with you. O Lord our God, You are wise and powerful, good and gracious. Your mercies are new every morning. Each day You open Your hand and provide for the needs of Your children on earth. We praise You for every grace and blessing. Strengthen Your church in all the world. Let Your comforting message of salvation in Christ Jesus be proclaimed to troubled souls everywhere. Use our ministries and offerings to extend Your healing and Your hope. We bring You our request for the various structures of our society. Bless our national state and local governments. Grant us civil servants who are worthy of honor and respect. Grant prosperity to our businesses and industries. Give employers a sense of fairness toward their workers and employees a feeling of joy and pride in their workmanship. Help us find satisfaction in all work well done. Invigorate the schools of our land. Give success to every effort that helps students read, think, and communicate in ways that will promote an informed and responsible citizenry. Arouse curious minds to discover the wonders of your created order. Give us teachers and students who will pursue excellence. Strengthen the families of your country. Give fathers and mothers renewed commitment to be good parents. Give children and young people the wisdom to regard their parents as your representatives. Lead us to love one another as you have loved us. Now hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. Gracious Father, we pray boldly as Jesus taught, with the confidence that You will hear, and with the faith that You will respond for our welfare. Amen. And we now pray the prayer that our Lord has taught us, found on the next page, page 11. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Brothers, sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We'll now sing our closing hymn, O Holy Spirit, grant us grace. Spirit, grant us grace that we, our Lord and Savior, in faith and fervent love embrace and truly serve Him ever, so that when death is near at hand, we at His cross may firmly stand. Help us that we your grieving word in faithful hearts may 
treasure. Let ere that bread of life afford new grace in richest measure. Make us to die to every sin. Each day create us new within that fruits of faith may flourish. And when our earthly race is wrong, that's bitter our impending. May your good work in us be gone, continue to my sending. Until we gladly may come back, our souls do to our Savior's hand, to rest in peace eternal. Good morning. So just a, a few um, announcements for you guys, really important things that I want to cue you in on. First of all, um, on the very last page of our bulletin today, we included... Um, I guess a, a form of an obituary for Marlene Wheeler. Um, just because of the circumstances and everything going on and, and not really being able to have a, a funeral in the way that we normally would, we, uh, Gary thought this would be kind of a nice way to, to let people get to know Marlene a little better um, through this sheet. Um, and in connection with that too, um, Gary has asked me to thank each and every one of you. I, I've been over at his place several times now just to kind of check in and see how he's doing and each time I feel like the, the amount of cards that sits on his table gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, which is awesome. Uh, that, that's so neat to see how God's people are supporting one another um, in, in a challenging time. Um, another really important announcement starting June 1st, which is tomorrow. I will be in my office each week, so the dates which are dates and times which are printed in the bulletin, but it's Monday from 5 p.m. to 7.30, Wednesday 9 a.m. to 11.30 a.m., and Sunday 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. On any of these given days, I invite you to come in, whether by yourself or with your family, to receive communion. Uh, this has been a long time without the Lord's Supper, where, where we get to receive in a very intimate way this gift of forgiveness. So certainly I invite you and encourage you to take advantage of that. And, and speaking of you know, increasing our faith and building our faith, make sure you take time to dive into the Word. There are so many opportunities now that this coronavirus hit. One of the very much distinct blessings is all of these opportunities we have to be in the Word. All of these, these different ways, whether it's online or, or in a printed copy, you have things like on our website, we have a daily devotional um, Monday through Friday that will be on there. Wednesdays is in a video format. Um, you have these online services. Um, you have weekly Bible class via Zoom. Um, if you want more information, certainly you can reach out to me on that. There's just so many ways to dive into the Word, and that's really, really important at a time like this. So finally, uh, my last announcement is an announcement of thank yous. On the very back sheet, on the front of it, you have a list of people, and I probably unfortunately missed some, that were part of making this service possible. You saw some of them as they were greeting and, and waving you into Park You, or, or maybe it's Cheryl playing, or, or Robin and Kelsey singing, or you have Kurt setting up all of this technology. Um, you have the Hetriches giving us our... Uh, our stage, I guess if you will, um, uh, standing on their hay wagon. So many people to thank. And while I didn't, I didn't think this was appropriate to do it in the middle of the service, I've been talking and seeing what other people have done during their drive-in service. And I saw one where they were encouraging people that any time that they were supposed to say amen in the service, they were supposed to honk their horn. I didn't think that was a great idea for the middle of worship. But I guess... If I could encourage everybody right now to just give one honk of the horn as a thank you to all those people, I think that would be awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. But above all, we have one person to thank the most, and that's our God. God is the one who gave us this ability, this opportunity to meet together in this very unique way. He's the one who's given us His Word for us to meditate and grow on. 
And what better way to thank Him than singing a song that's often given for God's praise. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Words are on the bottom of page 12. We'll conclude our time together by singing that hymn. Richest blessings be to all of you until we meet again. Keep, uh, keep posted and keep tuned in for more news about when we will do this next. And probably won't be every week just because of all the setup, but certainly this is something we can look into doing again. Um, I'll be back there to kind of wave and, and greet everybody with an air handshake.